There are four simple agreements that have the power to change your life. Be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Janika. I hope everyone's day is going well. Today we are breaking down one of my favorite books ever when it comes to self-care, self-help. I feel like The Four Agreements is just one of those books that everyone can learn something from, everyone can read and just get some bit of knowledge from it. So I'm not going to do a book review, but I am going to just break down like each of the four agreements and give my perspective. I feel like I need my reading glasses, baby. We is about to get right into it. Number one is to be impeccable with your word. This is one of the most significant agreements, but also one of the hardest to fulfill. Your words are powerful. It's the gift that comes directly from God. It's what helps us to create. On page 26 of the book, it says, the word is the most powerful tool you have as a human. It is a tool of magic, but like a sword with two edges, your word can create the most beautiful dream or your word can destroy everything around you. Your word is pure magic, but it becomes black magic when you misuse your word. While growing up, our parents and our siblings and people around us gave their opinion about us without even thinking. And we believed the words that they used to describe us is what's true. In the book, it gives the example. Someone gives an opinion and says, look, this girl is ugly. The girl listens, believes she's ugly and grows up with the idea that she is ugly. She has those beliefs simply because that's what she was told growing up. Up. Be careful what you say to people and be very careful about what you say to yourself. The word impeccable means without sin. So according to Ruiz, a sin is anything that you do which goes against yourself. You love yourself and you show that love through your interactions with others. You're using your word in an impeccable manner. The book tells us to direct our words toward love and truth and not towards black magic such as anger, hate, jealousy, gossiping, lying, making empty promises things of the sort. One of my favorite quotes from the book, it says here on page 44, you can measure the impeccability of your word by your level of self-love. Now y'all know this is self-care, self-love channel, okay? So let me repeat that. You can measure the impeccability of your word by your level of self-love. How much you love yourself and how you feel about yourself are directly proportionate to the quality and integrity of your word. When you are impeccable with your word, you feel good. You feel happy and at peace. To wrap it up, be impeccable with your word. That is rule and agreement number one. Agreement number two is don't take anything personally. When I say anything, he says anything, not the positive things you hear and not even the negative things you hear. The reason why this second agreement, don't take anything personally, is one of my favorite agreements, or well, it is my favorite agreement, is because I've learned that taking things personally is the maximum expression of selfishness. It's you're making the assumption that everything is about you and that's just not the case. Nothing others do is because of you. Everything people do is a reflection of their own realities and their own projection. For instance, it says here in the book on page 47, if I see you on the street and I say, hey, you are so stupid without knowing you, it's not about you, it's about me you take it personally, then perhaps you believe you are stupid. Maybe you think to yourself, how does he know? Is he clairvoyant or can everybody see how stupid I am? So you see that you taking it personally means that you personally think that you are what other people tell you you are. Happiness and self-awareness comes from inside of ourselves. Whether you tell me, Janika, I think you are the best or Janika, I think you are the worst, your opinion doesn't affect me one way or the other. I'm already going to believe that I'm the best. So you telling me I'm the worst. It doesn't really affect me. It's really like more so something that you got going on on your own personal like reality. It has nothing to do with me. This part I love because it really tries to help you take accountability and figure out what your triggers are. So you may even tell me, Miguel, what you are saying is hurting me, but it is not what I am saying that is hurting you. It is that you have wounds that I touch by what I have said. You are hurting yourself. Figure out what it is that you have open wounds about and heal those, work toward healing those. It's not gonna be super easy, but it's definitely worth healing so that when other people say things, you won't take offense to it. Think back on things people have said that has hurt your feelings and then ask yourself, why did this hurt my feelings? Like, is this a trigger that I haven't explored? Is this something that I need to heal? Is this a wound that's open that I need to like, take steps in healing. The book says here on page 60, if you keep this agreement, you can travel around the world with your heart completely open and no one can hurt you. You can say, I love you 
without fear of being ridiculed or rejected. You don't really care about what other people have to say about you because there's a level of freedom that comes with being fully carefree and not taking anything personal. Before we go any further, you guys, if you're getting anything out of this video so far, make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to my channel for more self-care tips and reviews. Agreement number three, don't make assumptions. If you are going to make assumptions, make sure they are positive ones. All the sadness and drama in your life was rooted in making assumptions and taking things personally. We make assumptions about what others are doing or thinking. We take it personally. Then we blame them and react by sending emotional poison with our words. Find the courage to ask questions and express what it is you truly want. It's important to communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid any problems, sadness, and drama. The book says, we make the assumption that everyone sees life the way we do. I don't even have to explain why that is a problem. Ask questions, get clarification. Do not assume that everyone sees life through our eyes. We all have different backgrounds. We all see life differently. So the best thing we can do is to not make assumptions. Another thing he talks about that stands out to me is, he talks about what is real love. In the book on page 70, he says, real love is accepting other people the way that they are without trying to change them. If we try to change them, this means we don't really like them. Okay, of course, if you decide to live with someone, if you make that agreement, it is always better to make that agreement with someone who is exactly the way you want him or her to be. Find someone whom you don't have to change at all. I really love that part because that's true. Like if you really do love someone, if the love is real, you're not looking to change them. That means you're wanting to change. It's like, I love this person if they were more like this. Like, no, you have to love and accept people exactly the way that they are. We can't mold people into being the person that we want them to be. Now, the fourth and final agreement is to always do your best. This one is pretty much the sum of the other three agreements to be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. It allows the other three to become deeply established habits and it's all about the action of the first three agreements. The book says under any circumstances, always do your best, no more, no less. Don't overdo it and wear yourself out, but also don't underperform to the point where you're going to feel guilty that you didn't put in the work that you were wanting to put in or that you didn't work as hard as you wanted to. Avoid feeling guilty, avoid the self-rejection, avoid you know the regret that you will feel by not putting in the work or by overdoing the work. Just do your best and your best changes. Your best is different during different parts of the day. Like in the morning, if you're a morning person, your best is going to be better than what your best would be at night. Or if you're not feeling well, your best while you're sick is going to be your best while you're sick. It's not going to be the same as your best when you're healthy, if you know what I mean. There is a short story here on page 77 that I feel like is very important. The master replied, you are not here to sacrifice your joy or your life. You are here to live, to be happy, and to love. If you can do your best in two hours of meditation, but you spend eight hours instead, you will only grow tired, miss the point, and you won't enjoy your life. Do your best, and perhaps you will learn that no matter how long you meditate, you can live, love, and be happy. That part right there, y'all, like, when I tell you that's exactly how I live my life, like the thing about it is like I am one broken nail away from having a mental breakdown every single day. And I can't even like imagine the mental turmoil other people have to deal with on a daily basis because I feel like I got it pretty easy. And if I'm a broken nail away from a mental breakdown every day, I cannot imagine how other people are close to their mental breakdown. So I believe like everyone needs to be treated with grace. I believe that you know, I'm gonna always do the best that I can and I fully trust that everybody else is doing the best that they can as well. He also says doing your best is taking the action because you love it, not because you're expecting a reward. For instance, he does use the example in the book of working. So you're suffering for five days of the week. To get your payday reward, you're not really doing your best because you are suffering. You're not happy doing what you're doing. You're just only there for the reward. So if you can, Find things in your life that you can do just because it actually makes you happy. Do that action because it's making you happy and not because you're expecting a reward. And he uses the movie Forrest Gump, saying that he wasn't the smartest man, but he did everything to the best of his ability. And he was rewarded simply because he enjoyed doing what he was doing. 
and not because he was expecting anything from doing the best that he could do. We have to be more self-aware and learn from our mistakes. That means we practice, analyze the results, and we keep practicing to increase our awareness. In conclusion, we have to break our old agreements out of biases, assumptions, fears, and being incompetent. Breaking our old agreements leads to personal freedom, which is the freedom to just be and express ourselves the way that we want. So follow these four agreements, study these four agreements, learn the four agreements, get the book and read this. The four agreements, once again, wrapping it up. Number one, be impeccable with your word. Number two, don't take anything personally. Number three, don't make assumptions. Never make an assumption. Number four, always do your best make sure to like this video comment down below some book suggestions if you have them and subscribe to this channel for more self-care tips and reviews and i'll see you guys next time